This episode of Grounded in Maine is sponsored by ESG Review. ESG Review magazine is published quarterly in February, May, August, and November, and is available for free in print and digital formats. ESG Review is devoted to environmental, social, and governance strategies, technologies, and investments. ESGReview.net is updated every Wednesday with eight new stories and is home to feature articles, news, items, and more. Visit ESGReview.net to stay informed and help us spark the collaboration and awareness needed to develop sustainable economies and communities around the world. There's a place where there's no trouble, no more pain, no more struggle. I just want to take a minute and talk about a podcast that I've been listening to that people might not know about. Uh, I met Fawn Anderson last May, and she has this great podcast called Our Friendly World, um, and I've been listening since then. I really, really enjoy it. I love. She puts it out on Sundays, and um, I always listen on Monday mornings. It's my first podcast to listen to on Monday mornings. Um, so Our Friendly World is talking about you know, world issues and how to bring it back to being, you know, relating with other people in different, you know, in all situations. Uh, and it's Fawn and her husband, Matt, and they talk together and they have some guests and it's just, it's just such a lovely podcast. I love the messages. I love how it makes me feel so connected but I just wanted to I just wanted to share that if you guys are looking for a new podcast, check out our friendly world. It is available wherever you listen to podcasts. <clears throat> oh man, this is getting so good. So this is week number two of Crystal guests. This is Crystal McIntyre today. Last week I had Crystal Sands, also wonderful. Crystal McIntyre approached me on Instagram and asked if she could be on my podcast, which. Of course, I'm never going to say no to someone unless they are not sustainable at all. But um, Crystal just impressed me so much. She is so passionate about her sustainable practices and she is just so engaging. And she um, she is an author, she is an illustrator, and she is practicing and teaching about human design and if you're wondering what that is, I did too, and she's going to tell us all about it in the podcast episode, so you're going to have to listen. Um, but Crystal lives in British Columbia, and uh, is she has got some fascinating stories that I cannot wait for you to hear. So here is Crystal. Enjoy. All right, so today I am speaking with Crystal McIntyre. Crystal, how are you today? I am doing great. Excited to be here. Thank you, Amy. Same. I'm super excited about this. So Crystal and I just met on Instagram very briefly, <laughs> not too long ago. Um, I saw some beautiful, beautiful artwork, and I'm trying to remember who had put it in my face, and I, <laughs> I was like, dude, I gotta, I'm, I'm loving this. So I just started following. And then I think you messaged me and you were like, Hey, I would love to talk about sustainable publishing because Crystal has written a book, um, or she's, she's, yeah, a children's book and you illustrate it as well. Cause you're mm -hmm. super cool. It's super cool art. Um, and you had mentioned sustainable publishing and that just, it blew my mind. I just, I, I couldn't figure it out because, you know, everyone thinks books are paper. So what is not sustainable about that? So Crystal, what the heck is sustainable publishing? What's up with the publishing business? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. Um, so when I started bringing my book to life, I realized as we move away from plastic as you know, that we're moving into paper. And already without that push, 15 billion trees a year are cut down. 
And within the publishing industry, there's like so many of these trees are being cut down just for textbooks. Mm. And so when I was bringing my, my book to life, I was like, you know, how can I do this in a way that, because I really believe in the value of connection between parent and child or guardian and child through reading. That was like a way that I connected with my parents, my grandparents. I have such fond memories of that. And there's a big push for that because people don't want to sit their kids in front of a screen to read a book. They want that tangible book. Mm -hmm. But I want to ensure that there is a planet left for this generation. Right. And so, yeah, I went down the rabbit hole of just what would it mean to bring a book to life as sustainably as possible? Yeah. And so what that looked like for my book was printing it on 100% recycled paper. So not only were no trees cut down to print my book, but actually there's trees that were saved and resources that were saved. And in the back of my book, I have a little information page about that. And not only that, yeah, not only that, I was faced with, okay, I can print it for super cheap in China, but I want to keep money in my own economy. And so through a little research, I found a carbon neutral printer just an hour away from me in Vancouver, Canada. And again, I think when it comes to sustainability, you're, I often find myself weighing up costs. Mm -hmm you know, it costs more for us to protect our natural resources to not be, you know, getting something plastic thing made in China, it costs us more money. And I was willing to pay more money in order to uphold the values that I have around this. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think, I mean, personally, I think that recycled paper just looks better. It's less intense. Yeah. But so tell us about your book. I'm yeah. sorry. So Crystal has a book <laughs> and it is called. It's called Bear Extraordinaire. And it's adorable. Yeah. And this is about um, it's about a blind polar bear that sets off on a journey from the Arctic and discovers he's actually he, he learns how to see with his mind and he discovers he's actually a spirit bear. And for those that don't know, spirit bears are real bears. They're white black bears. And it's a genetic mutation that happens to about 10 to 20% of these Kermode black bears. And they're only found on the, on the, in this tiny little rainforest on the Northwest coast of British Columbia. And rainforest in British, wait a second. Yeah, there's rainforest there's... <laughs> in British Columbia? Yeah, it's called the Great Bear Rainforest. Cool. Yeah, and and on Vancouver Island, there's quite a bit of rainforest as well, actually. Yeah. That's on my bucket list. Someday I'm going. Maybe next year. You should. (laughs) Oh, yeah, the old growth forests there are so incredible. Cool. And so when I first found out about spirit bears, it was in like a trivia. The question was, there are white black bears, true or false? And I found out about spirit bears and I started researching them. And at that time, this was back in um, 2012, there was a proposal to put a pipeline through the Great Bear Rainforest from Alberta to the Pacific Ocean. And it was going right through their natural habitat. And this is the only place in the world where they're found. Of course. And so I wrote this story to raise awareness about that. Now, it took 10 years for the story to be ready to come out of me in illustration form. And so thankfully, that project has um, since been kiboshed, it looks like. But I found it quite interesting that as I brought this book to life at this point, it was all about how sustainable I could I could do it so still I can see that right activist part of me (laughs) yeah you are you are hardcore so (laughs) I mean the the book came about because you learned about these bears that were 
pretty much endangered. They're just mm -hmm. in this one place and they were going to build a pipeline and mm -hmm. kill it all. And so yeah. you decided to write this book to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. And then after doing that, you wanted to print that as sustainably as you could. Yeah. That's freaking beautiful, Crystal. Oh my <laughs> gosh. And I, I did not know about spirit bears until today. <laughs> um, wow. I did not know that. I, when someone said spirit bear, I was like, yeah, it's like a guardian angel or, you know, like your spirit <laughs> animal, yeah. you know, the, the animal that you connect with. Yeah. I did not know that. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so they're, they're not polar bears because they are very Brown different bears. and they're smaller and they're not albino bears because they still have black noses and black eyes. And so it's actually a genetic mutation that happens with these black Kermode bears and a black Kermode bear can have a spirit bear cub and a spirit bear can have a black bear cub. But what they've found is that most of the time the black Kermode bears mate together and the spirit Kermode bears mate together. Hmm. Yeah. But then, but you said that a spirit bear could have a black bear cub and the yes. other way around. So yeah. if they mate with their, with the one that looks like them, I, I, I know think, we're not like biologists really, yeah. but that would be an interesting thing to watch. There, yeah. There would be a higher chance that two spirit bears would have a spirit bear cub, but because it's a genetic mutation, it can still. There's no guarantee. Yeah. Cool. I am totally looking up rainforests in British Columbia. Yes. The Great <laughs> Bear <awesome>. Rainforest. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, and so then um, publishing your book, you you went with uh, recycled paper, which is super mm -hmm. cool. And you did it locally even. Mm -hmm. So like less shipping um, yes. and the fuels. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and just keeping, you know, it was really important to me to just circulate money inside my own economy. And when I think about small businesses, they really are an ecosystem. And so when I look at my small business, um, it was a local company that printed my book on recycled paper. The um, mailer bags that I use are 100% compostable and they're from a Canadian company as well. When I have to package anything in plastic, again, that plastic is 100% compostable from another Canadian company. I get everything printed in another local print shop. And so it's, you know, to me, it's like when you support my business, you're also supporting like five other small Seven. businesses, which is, I think, so important. And, and a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's not it's, it's not a competition. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, we're looking out for ourselves so that we don't go under yeah. by spending extra money, but it's also cool. I mean, the smaller businesses near you will probably cut you a deal to get in on the business too, but how cool mm -hmm. that you have all those compostable bag, like packaging people near you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I know it's nice because oftentimes, especially being in Canada, you Google something and you find it so many in the United States and then you're like man I really want to <laughs> I really want to try and find something in my own country and yeah it's been really really amazing to see what's coming out in Canada as well especially sustainably that's awesome very cool um so I talked to a lady in Squamish not too long mm -hmm. ago and um she is also she, I, um, Rania, Rania Doobie, she's opening up the local food place, good food place oh. in Squamish. So she, what she's, she's trying to, um, educate her community about sustainably eating, like seasonal eating mm. and eating locally and organic and like you're just teaching them the process and why it's so important to do that. And so she, and she wants to open up this uh, storefront where people can like, sort of like a co-op, you know, you can order mm -hmm. in bulk or, you know, grow stuff and share what you have extra and stuff like that. Oh my so gosh. Your I area is... <laughs> I need to find. 
need to find you guys her. need to hook up. Uh, I will be your number one customer. <laughs> That's very cool. I mean, your little area is doing some big stuff. Yeah. That's super cool. Um, <clears throat> but so, and you have, you've illustrated two other books. Yes. And they're still in the Bear Extraordinaire line, right? No. 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 So one is about, um, it's called How Do I Fit? And it is about a circle that is born into a family of squares and its overlying theme is about the traditional school system and how um, there are children that just don't fit into that. And so it talks about, it, it shows him kind of like the, the the circle, the things that he tries to do in order to fit into this box. Mm. And yeah, it's a very, very beautiful story. Awesome. And I love it. The, yeah. And then the, and that one's already out now. Um, and then the other one is called Ohm. And it is about a deaf boy who starts being able to hear sound through his heart. And he starts experiencing sound through his heart and just the journey that that takes him on um, to understanding himself and life deeper. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to see the pictures for those. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just remembering, I think that it was, I think it was the Be Clean store that hooked me up with you. Like, I think that oh. they had, I had seen that they had liked some of your posts and I was like, I should look into that. Yes. Or that, that you're, they're carrying. Yeah. So they bought a few of the calendars every year. I make calendars oh, yeah. with inspirational illustrations. And so they were carrying some of those this year. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I think Rania hooked me up with them. Oh, so amazing. you guys are all, <laughs> you're all connected. You just got to meet them. Yes. <clears throat> That's very cool. Um, I am actually, I have a children's book that I've been working on for Ooh too many years I mean you know how that is right I mean you have to get to that point but it's mm -hmm. um and illustration is going to be like a big struggle for me because I am not that person yeah <laughs> but um I just saw I one of my Facebook memories the other day it was 11 years ago I posted about it so oh, wow do you want to share what it's about it is about a cat mm -hmm. um who makes pizza dough oh nice so the the kneading action that the cat does makes Aww. the best pizza dough and yeah, yeah. it was I my first that. cat yeah, <laughs> I love that. yeah so I need to I need to get on that I really do <laughs> so and maybe I'll hook up with you and you can help me out yeah definitely <laughs> uh so Squamish is um Gosh, you guys are doing some big stuff. That's exciting. I definitely am going to work on that. What else? Uh, you were telling me that there is more to you than just book publishing. <laughs> yeah. So I also uh, utilize the human design tool. So this is a tool for self-knowledge. Um, it's essentially science meets spirituality. So it combines things on the spirituality side, like the chakra system, astrology, the tree of life, and this book called the I Ching, which is the ancient book of changes. This is from about 3000 years ago. This book has been around. Wow. And in the seventies, they discovered that the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching directly relate to the 64 codons of our DNA. Ooh, 3000 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so human design utilizes that and it gives you this energetic blueprint of who you're here to be. And the thing I love most about human design is it gives you tangible things that you can start experimenting with. And just like anything, it's not meant to be a box that you fit yourself into. It's meant to liberate you. And so through the experimentation, you see, oh yeah, this works. Okay. This doesn't work. I let go of that. And I, I really love just how 
much it has freed up my own life and helped me not only see myself, but then be able to see others as individual as well. And not thinking that like they need to be doing it the same way as me or anything like that. Right. I mean, my first thought was it, it must just give you this feeling of connection, like to yourself, but also to everything around you. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. 3000 years. Yeah. And we haven't really, it's taken us 3000 years to, to match that basically. So the human design has been around since the eighties, but the, the I Ching, which is the ancient book of changes is from Asia, China. And mm -hmm. it, yeah, they, they have it dated back about 3000 years. And so it was a tool for divination back then. And in the seventies, science caught up to it and was like, oh, wow, look at these 64 hexagrams. They relate directly to our DNA. Ah, okay. So we've been working to, to figure that out for about 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Once, once yeah. finding that that's wild. Huh. Yeah. I totally did not know about that. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so what kind of, I know you have like a, um, it's like a qu quiz or a survey type thing on your website for, uh, for that, yeah. or is it just, you're just putting your name and email in and, and you'll get connected. Yeah. And so then you get, I have like, um, so when you Google human design, you get a lot of information. <laughs> I imagine. And my goal is to make it as accessible and understandable as possible. So I have, um, I have combined my two passions, illustration and human design. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll just be start pumping out content where it's illustrated human design to really help you grasp. I'm a visual learner. And so it, it really helps in kind of like a fun and engaging way, help you to understand some of the bigger concepts. And then when you go to my website, you can punch in your email and your name and you'll get um, like a mini guide to human design. So I've broken everything down as simple as possible. You can find yourself in it, but then you can also use it to see the rest of your family. Yeah. So it's like a more, maybe a more in-depth like ancestry or something like that, sort of. Would Except you... that it uses your birth. So you use your birth day, your birth time and your birth place. And it calculates everything astrologically um, and through like the I Ching and everything to give you this like energetic picture of who you are. Okay. So it's not like that at all. All right. <laughs> it's very different. Okay. I mean, it's, it's sort of the same idea, but not, not physical, but more like yes. metaphysical. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Interesting. That's really cool. And so that that's really all that you put in the birth date, the time and where you're born. Yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah. And then it does all the calculations for you. If you don't know your birth time, you can there. I mean, there are ways around some, you can call the hospital. Sometimes they still have the records you can. I know people have gotten in like intuitive readings or you can kind of just guess sometimes it doesn't change a lot and sometimes it changes a lot so you kind of play around and see um but yeah it just the thing that I love the most about it is it tells you how you're designed to make decisions and it always comes in the body you know we think our mind we get out the yellow notepad we write down the pros and cons but like the mind only knows the past and so the mind can't predict the future. It doesn't really know where we're going. And so it's the body that really tells us. And human design can help you understand how you're really designed to make decisions. Ooh. That is different. I mean, it, when you're telling me that about the body making the decisions, I, I'm, my mind is going to like what, kinesiology? Is that like that it draws you? Well, and, but that's so, just where my mind goes. Yeah. It, you know, some people it's their gut. So your gut is telling you like, this is right for me. This is wrong for me. Some people it's intuition. Some people it's this heart pull. And so it still takes practice to deepen the relationship. Uh, but it it's, 
it's really showing us like the mind is not really here to make decisions because sometimes the way that we're supposed to move forward doesn't make the most sense. Hmm. It's like when you've said like, okay, I don't know why I need to do this thing, but I need to do it. It's like that intuitive hit to call someone. And then they're like, oh, I was literally picking up the phone to call you. It's, it's outside of the realm of logic and understanding. And it plays in the, yeah. And it's tapping into the energetics of, of life. Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. And so that is, that is, um, the human design, human design. (laughs) I want to say genetics, but, and it would, it is sort of, but but it's not the title. Okay. Human design. That's very interesting. I had no idea. I'm so (laughs) looking that up. Um, and so what is, so that is, that's a, that must be a big thing right now. I hope that you've got lots of people that are like, I need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, is there, is there a next for you? Like what's, what's on the, in the future for you? Well, ultimately bringing to life human design picture books. Ooh. Yeah. But not in the way of, again, it's like, I'm really, I mean, I already have them kind of coming to life, but it's less about, again, it's not a box that you, you you want your kid to fit into. It's about bringing awareness to how your child naturally already moves through the world and, and honoring that. And, and my big thing with human design is the way we're in relationship together. Mm -hmm. So what I really love is I I say like in my business, I hold up the two-way mirror. First, you get to see yourself through the mirror and then you, and then we spin it around and it becomes the window to which you view everyone else seeing, knowing that they are also unique individuals who do things in different ways. And the more that we can honor that, especially as children, we can help them to grow up in more ease and alignment being like, oh yeah, this is, this is normal that you don't have a lot of energy because you're not the same as this kid over here that just runs around all day and never seems to tire of energy. Right. We're all different and it takes all types. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes it beautiful. Huh. And that, that would incur, it would teach children to be more, reasonable (laughs) maybe (laughs) I just feel like a lot of adults are very unreasonable and just like yeah just not not flexible at all yeah and and you can see you know even in relationship where one person's energy is naturally a lot lower than another person you can see the clash and like okay how how do you relate to rest as the person who needs more rest? Mm-hmm. And how do you relate to not needing rest and, and being okay with just being like, no, I'm going to keep going. And yeah, it, it, to me, human design is like a permission slip. And so when we can give that permission slip to ourselves, we can start giving it to other people and helping yeah. kids be like, oh, do you feel like the blue heron that likes to go to the depths, but then comes back up, but also stands just like rests super still and then flies, you know? So I have created these, these birds or no, I didn't create them. They're real birds, but like, (laughs) or there's five energy types. And so each energy type has its own bird so that hopefully the child can connect in some way to the attributes that that character has without it being like, no, you're the, you're the, peacock so you're like this it's like oh which one do you does your child naturally resonate with Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I yeah I think growing growing up we were do we did a lot of like Winnie the Pooh you know who who do you connect with and I was I remember always being like connecting with Eeyore and that was like you know but it was like not not the most positive light Mm. (laughs) Yeah. You know, so that's interesting. That's really interesting. And then the way that you describe it, like going into the depths, but then soaring up after, you know, that's beautiful just to, you know, you're not, I'm sure you could describe it a lot better than me, but I love that. And to use birds, why not? Yeah. Are you, 
are you a bird watcher? Like, do you? I definitely love birds. Yeah. And when I was bringing these, when I was feeling into the attributes of each character, I think, I mean, birds are just so magical. You know, there's ones that live, you know, go under the water and go in the sky. And I just think they have, they they have these like mystical kind of qualities to them oftentimes. Oh my God. <laughs> One second. My cat. <laughs> just banging at the door. Um, yeah, I just find birds so mystical. Just the fact that they can fly. I mean, who doesn't, as an adult, as a human, doesn't wish that you could just right? sneak up and soar off? It's like everyone's dream. Like, we want to be in the air. Hello! <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a big kitty. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's cool. And then, and... I'm really curious where the bears, like where you discovered the bears, Crystal, the um, the spirit bears. Like, how did you just were you reading and you were like, huh? It was some sort of trivia. I, I don't even I don't even know if I was like at a trivia night or it was just like somehow I saw this trivia that asked, true or false, there are white black bears, and then it said true, and I was like, I need to know more about this. <laughs> I'm guessing here, but I'm going to find out for real. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. And from that trivia night comes this book and now you're doing calendars. Yeah. So I've been making calendars for the last eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And they're just full of like oh inspirational illustrations. You know, I really wanted to help keep people lifted and help people see things in a different way. And oftentimes someone will like flip the calendar to the next month and then they'll instantly message me and be like, oh my God, this is exactly what I needed to hear this month. And yeah. And mostly it was a way for me to stay connected to my art when life was kind of taking me away from that for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I would always come back to that place. And it's been pretty cool to watch the evolution of, of my art as well over the eight years. Oh my gosh, he's so sweet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. So needy. <laughs> I, you're not paying attention to me. Oh my goodness. No. no. <laughs> wow. So that is really interesting. And I'm very, I'm going to be watching to see what happens with the human design picture books. Yes. How that is coming out. And so, and you were saying that you've got a book you, that you illustrated that's coming out in the next month. Yeah, it should be. We're just doing the final um, edits. All the illustrations are done for it. And then I will be sending it off to the printer for them. And that's the one called Ohm. Yes. Sweet. Yeah. Very cool. Well, so Crystal, when I say the word sustainability, what does that mean to you? Mm. I know it's a big word. Yeah. Sustainability to me really means leaving the least impact as possible on the planet for the next generation. And like I mentioned earlier, also just continuing to circulate money inside my own economy to generate and 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 to promote small businesses and things but yeah it's really important to me to leave a nice planet for the future generations right I know I yeah. was talking to someone um I was talking to someone just I think last week and he was like why are you why are you so passionate about sustainability? And and I, I was kind of feeling pressured, like, why, why, why? And I was like, I don't know. And then I said something like, I grew up in the 80s and it was the, the age of excess and everything was so fun and loud and, and playful and hairspray and loud engines and, you know, and we killed the environment. And now like, I feel responsible, like I need to, take I need to take that back and like try to make it better 
I mean, I know it wasn't me personally, completely, yeah. but you know, someone's got to, yeah, I just, I feel guilty. I feel guilty because, you know, I don't have children, but the children are, the world is a mess right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we did that. I think if everyone did what they could, you know, it's, and I see a lot of anxiety around, like, I have to do it all. And it's like, if you can just do what's manageable for you, whether that's always reusing reusable bags, whether that's, you know, buying as much as you can locally, supporting, getting things secondhand. It's like, whatever feels good for you, we can't do it all. And I think more onus needs to be put on corporations, but mm -hmm. we're the, we the people make the decisions. So if we're not buying things from them, they then feel that. they'll feel that, you know, someone recently told me that Amazon is planning on laying off 10,000 workers. And I was like, that's oh. amazing because that tells me that people have gone back to supporting their local economies mm -hmm. and really being intentional about like, okay, yeah, I have to use Amazon for this thing, but I, you know, I'm not, I don't shame anyone that uses Amazon, but like, can we be a little bit more intentional if you can drive 30 minutes and get it versus just ordering it off Amazon? Mm -hmm. Right. I love, I love the way that you said that though. I think the word manageable is key, you know, mm -hmm. because, because that is, that is pretty much my goal. Like I want people to feel like you don't have to do everything, but we can all do something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm so jealous <laughs> uh, for people that are just listening and not watching check out YouTube. <laughs> this is adorable. Crystal has a cat that is literally like licking her face, just giving kisses yeah. and it's very sweet. Yeah. You're like, excuse me. <laughs> Pay attention here. Manageable. 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 Yeah. That's Whatever we can manage. Oh. Yeah. You know, I, some people will turn the shower off in between so they can soap up. Like that's not my jam, but I buy most of my things secondhand or, you know, printed a sustainable picture book. And so it's, again, I think it's not about shaming what people don't do. It's, it's like celebrating yep. what we do do. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. And um, Crystal, if people are totally inspired and want to learn more about human design or your incredible art and your mm -hmm. your big heart for the environment like how can people find you or follow you yeah so you can follow me on instagram it's at crystal mcintyre and, and that's with a y right yes. mcintyre with a y yeah c-r-y-s-t-a-l m-c-i-n-t-y-r-e and my website has links for my book and links and it talks about human design so you can also check me out there I started a youtube to share more like in-depth human design uh, but I hang out mostly on instagram so same yeah oh I'm gonna check out your youtube though that'll that will be really interesting yeah cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. And and anyone, if they if you go to the Instagram page, her link in her bio will connect you to the website. Yes. Wow, Crystal, I you, I'm so impressed. I'm so surprised. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I didn't know you, but <laughs> I'm just I'm so impressed. How many like how many ways to be sustainable there are, and mm -hmm. you just brought at least two brand new things to me that I mm. did not know. Yay. So thank you. Thank okay. you for your time. Thank you for sharing your cat. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for letting her be here. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, thank you for this podcast because it gives people new insight into the, the manageable thing that they can do without it needing to be overwhelming. And so yeah, this is such a beautiful podcast to have to just help bring awareness and help people be like, oh, that's the thing that I'm going to explore and dive into. That's my plan. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. Well, I I really appreciate your time and oh my goodness, the things that you do are just awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. All right. I just want to take a moment and thank my guest again for speaking with me and sharing such great information. Uh, I also need to thank Buzzsprout for hosting this podcast, for Jane Bolduck and her amazing music genius, for Becca Coffron and her beautiful artwork. And I'd like to thank you for listening. Please check out the show notes. Um, I'm going to have links posted in there if you would like to follow this guest and learn more about them. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. There'll come a day My mama told me When I find love To have and hold me A heart that's strong And so sincere Just tell me how do I get there from here Oh tell me Tears and wonder. How